Welcome to Electron Online. Our next chapter in algebra will deal with how to solve quadratic equations using the method of factoring. Now there's a number of methods in which we can solve quadratic equations, but we're going to concentrate on that one method called factoring. Now you may ask yourself the question, what do we mean by solving a quadratic equation? Well, what it is, is first of all, we start with a quadratic equation where we have y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. That's the general format of a quadratic equation. But then we set y equal to 0, and we change the equation to something like this. Now, of course, this is the general form. We can, of course, put numbers in there, such as y equals x squared minus 5x plus 6. And then we set y equal to 0, and it becomes this. So where a equals 1, b equals negative 5, and c equals 6. So that's a quadratic equation, but what does it really represent? It represents a relationship between the variable on the horizontal axis, x, and the variable on the vertical axis, y. So y is what we call the dependent variable. It's dependent on x, and x is the independent variable. So we change the value for x, and we get a different value for y. And for some of those values, y will be equal to 0. When x is a particular value, y will be 0. And so when we say that we're solving a quadratic equation, we're looking for the variables of x that makes y equal to 0. And to find those, we can go ahead and use the technique where we then set the y equal to 0, and then we solve this equation. That's what we mean by solving the quadratic equation. We solve for the variables where the function crosses the x-axis. In essence, that's what it means. So I have some words up here saying solving a quadratic equation means finding the roots of the equation. In other words, finding the roots of the equation means finding the place where the graph crosses the x-axis. Now, In this particular case, with this particular equation, the two places are x equals 2 and x equals 3. So how is that done? Well, again, that's where we need the various techniques, and we're going to practice here on the technique of factoring to do that. Essentially, we take the equation like this, we set the y equal to 0, because that's where we find the places where the function crosses the x-axis. Then we solve for that by factoring this trinomial. And then we realize, since we multiply the quantity x minus 3 times the quantity x minus 2, and we set equal to 0, that means either x minus 3 must equal 0, or x minus 2 must equal 0, or both. But in this case, it can't be both. So if x minus 3 equals 0, then x equals 3. If x minus 2 equals 0, then x equals 2, and those are the two solutions we're looking for. The two places where the function, the function y equals x squared minus 5x plus 6, where it crosses the x-axis. So we, we turn this function into a quadratic equation. We set the left side equal to 0, so instead of y, we set 0. That means we're looking for the place where it crosses the x-axis. We then solve that by, by factoring the right side, by factoring that trinomial, and then we find out what the two values are. And that's essentially what we're trying to do, and that's what we mean by solving a quadratic equation. Now, there are occasions where there may only be one solution, where the graph just barely touches the line, only in one place, and therefore there's only one solution, or sometimes the graph doesn't touch the, the x-axis, so there are really no solutions. However, if we then draw a mirror image of the graph, we simply flip it over, and then we see where the mirror image crosses the x-axis. Those are what we call two imaginary solutions, and we'll talk about that later in another chapter. Right now, we simply want to use the technique to solve for the cases where there are indeed two places where it crosses the x-axis. And so for that, we're going to use what we call the method of factoring to solve the quadratic equation. And we'll show you all kinds of examples of how to do that. And that is how it's done. 